How does your head look to your eyes? Well, I tell you, it looks like what you see out in front of you. Because all that you see out in front of you is how you feel inside your head. You know, it's like it's not obvious to me that people themselves think that they're valuable all the time. Often they don't think that at all. They don't, certainly don't think that often when they're depressed. They certainly don't think that when they're suicidal. They don't really think that when they're ashamed or guilty or frustrated or disappointed or angry or waking up at three in the morning and tormenting themselves with their consciences. They don't necessarily think that when they're fighting with their family or when they're upset at work or, you know, when things go wrong in life. And so it's not so bloody obvious that people are inherently valuable. And then you might also notice that it's kind of easy to think that some people are more valuable than others. It's very easy for human beings to think that about other human beings because no matter where you look in human societies, there are rank orders of value, right? In, in any hierarchy that we produce that's associated with some ability, we find that some people are so much better at whatever it is that they're doing that it's an absolute miracle and most people are absolutely dreadful at it. And so, you know, if you were thinking about inherent value as an approximation of skill or competence, then it wouldn't be obvious from the structure of the world that people were inherently valuable in that manner either because there's such a rank order difference in our ability to do things. It doesn't matter how talented you are, if you don't have self-belief, you're not going to get anywhere. You can't do that. You'll mess it up. You'll never get it right. You're just not good at that. I want you to change that voice to a cheerleader. A parent who dotes on you, a teacher who thinks you are the best thing in the world. Regardless of that, you have a moral obligation, so that would be a responsibility, to assume that despite all evidence, that there's actually something of intrinsic worth about you and that as a consequence, you're duty bound to treat yourself like that is true. And then it turns out that if you do that, well, then your life gets better. And I don't mean happier exactly, although I would say it gets happier. I mean it gets richer and more meaningful and deeper and more worthwhile. And you become more educated and you become wiser and you treat yourself with more respect and you're a better model for other people and you're a better father or a better sister or better mother, whatever it happens to be and you're less ridden by that guilt that gnaws at you and shame that's there otherwise saying you're not what you could be you're not what you could be and that's a hell of a voice to get rid of and it's certainly not one that's easy to ignore so that's a pretty good idea that there's something divine let's say that resides within you of ultimate worth even as a philosophical statement or a psychological statement rather than a metaphysical statement it seems to be a precondition for establishing properly harmonious relationships with yourself. And that's, man, that's worth thinking about a lot. Because you could think that in some sense you just own yourself, you know? Because people do kind of make that claim, especially when they're trying to justify, for example, their right to suicide. That, you know, it's your life, it's your body, you're yours to do what you will with. And if that was true, well then it would seem to me that life would be a lot more straightforward because you would just tell yourself things that you would instantly obey and believe. So first of all, you'd tell yourself all the things that you were going to do and then you'd just run off and do them, which you don't, obviously, because it's much more difficult than that. And then you'd also say, well, enough of the guilt and the shame and the negative emotion and the disillusionment and the vengefulness and all those things that make life hard the self-recrimination it's like what the hell do we need that for and if we're our masters of our own destiny and owners of our own fate then why can't we just command to ourselves that that be dispensed with and i want you to hear that voice saying yay you can do it you're amazing. This is your area of excellence. You're good at this. You know, if you were a kid running a race at school, you'd want your parent to be there going, come on, come on. You're brilliant. You're amazing. If you were doing an assignment at school, you want the teacher or your parent to go, you're, you're very smart. You're really good at writing. This is your skill set. 
So I want you to become a loving parent to yourself, a praising teacher, a cheerleader that always goes, yes, you can do this. This is easy for you. This is a walk in the park. Or you have the skills, the talent. You've, you've read that book. You know the answers. You've studied. So that's how you stop being your own worst critic. Flip it over. And if you're saying, I always mess it up, start to go, I get it right. I always forget things. I've got a great memory.